I'm Heather Reisman. I always introduce myself as Indigo's chief book lover, but I am the chief book lover with a number of interests. My interest in tonight's topic was first spurred by a book about the relationship between meditation and all kinds of things that are good for you. And I'm delighted to introduce Ariel Garten. Tell us how this happened. How did you end up starting this enterprise? I really wanted to find a way that we could help understand our minds in ways that were going to be practical and applicable. So I spent a lot of time exploring the brain from an artistic perspective. How do we create art installations that give us an experience of the mind? And a scientific perspective. How do we have real technology that tells us what goes on inside of it? And so Muse was a culmination of the two, an understanding of both the you know, clear technical aspect of the brain and an emotional experience of the self, something that gives you self-knowledge that you can use in a meaningful way to improve. Is it legitimate for you to actually say that this device will help you get into a meditative state, and if you get yourself into a meditative state, that other good things will happen. Muse teaches you to build states of focused attention. So most people think that meditation is about just letting your mind go blank, having no thoughts. That's not what it's about. The first step of meditation is around learning to focus your brain. And typically, you focus your brain on a single object, which is your breath. And so you focus on your breath, and then your mind wanders onto some thoughts, and then you bring your mind back to your breath. What Muse does is it teaches you how to do that state of focused attention, and when your mind starts to wander, it gives you a little notification so that you know to bring it back. So the metaphor we use is your mind is like the wind. So when you're thinking, distracted, ruminating, you hear it as windy. You actually hear the sound of your own mind. Right. You hear your brain activity. And as you come to a state of clear, focused attention, you quiet those winds. How often do you muse? So I muse daily. Um, sometimes I try to do it in the morning. Often I'll take, I actually always have my muse on me. I throw it in my purse or I even keep it in my back pocket. Right. So when there's something stressful that comes up, I'll take a few minutes and muse. And oh, if I don't have my muse, I'll also just call back to what I learned using my muse. So I may not actually put the muse on, but I'll say, oh, right, this is what I've learned during the course of right. musing all this time, and I have that knowledge at my re fingertips. A woman the other day was telling me about how she had uh, stress leave because of depression and anxiety, right. and through using muse, and she used it for an hour a day. She was really had clinical depression and anxiety. Right. She was over able to overcome the depression and anxiety, go back to work, be far more productive. Her friends noticed the difference. Another woman, um, her name is Rachel, she was telling me a lovely story. She was in the park with her two-year-old. Right. And typically, in the park with her two-year-old, she never realized this. She'd be thinking about her grocery list, the things that she had to do. And after musing, she recognized that when she was in the park, her mind was just elsewhere. And now she could say, oh, wow, this is like the best moment of my life in the park with my kid, and I can actually just focus be on present. it. Be present. I'm grateful you're doing this. I think we all are, and I'm personally grateful that you were here tonight. Uh, Thank you so much. Grateful for you, Heather. Really wonderful. Thank you.